Welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show, the best dead gum garden show on the radio and internet as well. Hope you are having a good evening. And you know what? We got something special for you. We got Miss Hoss in the house. Hello again. And we're going to be talking about planting garlic. So stay tuned. We got some interesting and some good information about planting garden this evening. Some good facts. And we're actually going to show you how to plant it. Yep. So what you got going on, Mama Hoss? What have I got going on? I've been canning some more, some Italian stewed sun sweet. These are yellow canaries I just picked out of the garden oh, I earlier. Those are, yeah, okay. those are sun, those sun sugars are a little sun sugars, bit yeah. are a little bit uh, more yellowish than these are. Mm -hmm. Yep, those are really good. Whoo, man! Yeah. And I did a video on how to do this. Yep. So I just I. I I was out there in, in the greenhouse and I looked around. I'm still oh. putting on plenty of yellow canaries. Now these are in a, uh, a pot. Mm -hmm. So I just couldn't believe how productive these things have been. You know what? You could just plant these all summer long and you could have, down in the south, eight months out of the year, I believe you could grow these tomatoes. I've got them at the house too. Mm -hmm. Yep. I actually repotted some so that covered up the root more. Yeah. And trimmed them off, and mm -hmm. they just as pretty as they were when we planted them. Yep. Um, now I got beets. I got to plant in my garden, but you've already got them planted. I got touchstone, the golden mm -hmm. beets already planted up about that high. Some spinach, um, some bunch of onions. Mm -hmm. My carrots are going strong. My English peas are going strong. And strawberries. Strawberries are looking like good. Crazy. Yep. I'm gonna plant some Merlot. Uh, no, excuse me, Merlot. <laughs> Merlin. <laughs> Merlin beets in my garden. I'd like to have Merlot, have some Merlot, Merlot beets. beets. <laughs> Merlin beets in my garden because you know you remember Trace talking about the sweetness of uh -huh. them, and I want to do some more pickled beets. You do? Yeah, I do. You gonna pickle? I am. <laughs> With some help. <laughs> So we got beets, we got that chicken. We got a new chicken. We have a new chicken. Um, we'll show you a picture of that chicken. He is what kind? Of it's a she. She is a golden lace wine dog. And our neighbors got into the chicken business about a year ago. And they got, uh, as, as most people do, it's just getting in chicken business. They got into it big time. And it was time for our herd to be renewed. So I got rid of my old chickens because they was they were playing out as far as laying eggs, and they gave us two. It's been a it's been a few months ago. They gave us two uh, lavender lavender Orkingtons, which is very rare. They're purplish. They're beautiful. And then the other day they asked me, I want to. I said, Yeah, I wouldn't mind having another one. So they gave us a golden lace wine dog. We named it Brown. Brown because our blue ones are named Blue One and Blue Two. And then we have a rooster called Snowball. Snowball is a Delaware, and I am dead set against having anything on the homestead that doesn't tote its weight. But we have no use for Snowball. What's Snowball what? is my pet chicken. But I'm, I, we go at it with Snowball. I'm ready to get rid of Snowball. No, Snowball is a good chicken. She wants to keep Snowball. Anyway, Snowball is pretty big. Snowball is not going anywhere. But uh, we're not going to have, we're not raising the baby chicks. So in my opinion, we don't need a rooster. So anyway, we kind of have that battle we have to fight out and, you know, do what we can. What about our trip last weekend? Man, it was nice, wasn't it? Mm. We had a trip to the mountains for a few days. We was in North Georgia around Clayton, Dillard area, and it was fantastic. Leaves were changing yep. some. Yep. We went to a farm stand up there and um, bought some cabbage. We had cabbage one night Huge for dinner. Cabbage. But I seen something up there that I, that you, you ever see these things that just really make your memory come back? I seen what they call October beans. Yeah. They were selling buck October beans. And October beans are white. They kind of look like peppermint. They got pink and red streaks in them. And I, it's a shelling bean. So it's not a snapping bean. You shell it and eat the beans. And it's, it's a huge staple in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Years ago, my people used to grow them down here and ship them to the mountains. But I hadn't seen them in years and years. So I said, well, come back. I said, man, I got to find the source of these. We need to be selling them. We need to be growing these October beans. So I've done a good bit of research and come to find out October bean and cranberry bean are the same thing. And it's a regional name. Mm. 
So there is another technical name from it that the seed company, the breeder calls it, that sells it. Then somehow or another it gets renamed out there. So if you people out there know anything about these October beans and cranberry beans, about the true variety of them and any of the history about it, comment and let us know because it's interesting to us. We're trying to source some. I think it'd be a great one to add to our, our seed list there. October, and beautiful. They're easy to shell because mm -hmm. you let them pretty much mature out and they just pop up and shell. They will get $40 a bushel for them. Oh. Yeah. So anyhow, that was really fun. We had a good time. Weather was cool. Hike. Perfect good. weather. A good bit. Yeah, we hiked some. I'm known for my fast walking. I've got fairly long legs, so uh, I normally stay way yeah. ahead of everybody else. We took my mother, Granny, who's 77, and my stepdad, Jean Pa, who is 80, and we went to a museum. We went to the Foxfire Museum. For you out there that know about the Foxfire books, well, all that was started in North Georgia. And it's really interesting to read about the history of how that got going and everything. But we went to the Foxfire Museum, walked around there. It's about a half, hill. half a mile <laughs> round trip there. And Granny, which is 77, she was moving a little slow, and I got on to her a little bit. And you know what she told me? She says, I hope I live to see you be 77 years old trying to come up these hills. I didn't say nothing else. That was a pretty good <laughs> response. I didn't say nothing you else. Left you left everybody. I left everybody. You didn't yep. help very much. Nope. I move when I got to move and I stop when I got to stop. That's the way I roll. way you roll. Yep. Main segment, we're going to talk about garlic. And I'm going to tell you what, garlic is interesting because it is so diverse and there's, meat, there's three different kinds of it and it has grown all over the world. Did you know that? Average consumption for Americans is three pounds of garlic per person per year. Wow. Three pounds. That's a lot. So we eat a lot of garlic. We do eat a lot of garlic. You know, and the most of the garlic that we eat comes out of the grocery store, comes from China. 60% of our consumption of garlic in the U.S. comes out of China, and it's a what they call a silver skin. It's just a generic variety of silver skin garlic that you see in the store. Now that percentage used to be higher, but it has hmm. gradually came down since people have become more aware of that. And they're starting to produce more USA grown garlic than they used to be. So that percentage has come down. 40% of our garlic now is produced in the USA. And a lot of you small farmers are growing these unique varieties and, uh, and that's really kind of caught on. Do you know it's nutritious for you? I do. You do? Yep. They've used it ancient for 5,000 years as um, medicine. Mm -hmm. um, have this you ever is, ate this it is raw? A, elephant garlic? This is elephant garlic. I don't know if I have. Um, they recommend for healthy benefits to eat it raw. Cut it up and let it sit about seven minutes. <laughs> and? It's a little spicy. And that's I elephant garlic. Yes. You know, we've eaten it cooked several times, but I never really ate it raw. <laughs> Okay, so it contains allicin, <coughs> which is a sulfur it's compound. It's got some allicin in it, all right. <laughs> it's a sulfur compound that has the health benefits. So it's good for your cardiovascular system. It lowers your blood pressure. Um, it helps with uh, heart disease, as I said, boosts your immune system. And it's also known to help with your memory. One of the neat facts I read was Eleanor Roosevelt would eat three cloves a day. Raw? Raw, Ooh. and she attributed. Her she didn't have a lot of close friends. <laughs> she attributed her excellent memory to the garlic. Yeah, I bet they didn't mean people get real close to her. She ate three cloves a day. Wow. So, you ate some more. It's good. I mean, it's okay. It's good. I think it's an acquired taste. Yeah, and and of Raw. all the garlics, which elephant garlic is not a true garlic, but we're going to say Talk it is that. for the sake of the show. It is the mildest. Is the mildest. Right. So. The neat thing is that some of these, they even got a black garlic. Some of these real weird varieties have some real profound flavors to them that yeah. a lot of people like. So, yeah. yeah. So, There's over 600 named varieties of garlic. Oh, I can smell it. Yeah. <laughs> 600 named varieties. So they're grown all over the world. Uh, India, China, everywhere grows a lot of garlic. And we use a lot of garlic when we cook. Yeah, we do. All right, it's question, is it a vegetable? or herb, or a flower? It is a vegetable. And you know why? Why? Because it does not have the seed inside of it. If it had the seed inside of it, it would be a fruit. But the beans that does not have the seed in it, it is classified as a vegetable. 
And it's of what family? Allium family. Right. Yep. It's the member of the Lily Amaryllis family, along with onions, leeks, shallots, mm -hmm. scallions, and chives. So pretty much you would grow it as just like you would onions. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Now there's some subtle differences there, but you would grow it uh, as far as fertility goes, weed control and everything like that. You grow it just like you would yeah. uh, with onions. I actually planted mine in the bed with some leeks and some bunch of onions mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just treated them the same. Yep. These three basic three different types of garlic. And we're going to go over that with you real quick. Hard garlic. Hard neck. Hard neck garlic, which has fewer cloves. <laughs> fewer cloves than any of the rest of them. It's easier to grow in cold climates. So you people way up north, this is probably your preferred kind to grow. It's it, larger. It has a stronger flavor yeah. and more profound flavor a lot of times than the other does cold hardy and it's harder to braid you know you've seen people you've seen these magazines mm -hmm. where they braid it store it hang it up it's kind of neat yeah. well this particular one the hard neck is the harder one to grow compared to soft neck it doesn't store as well either yep and soft neck i'll let you talk about it soft neck is mostly what you find in the grocery store mm -hmm. Uh, stores longer. It's the one that is the easiest to braid. So these pretty, like you're talking about in these magazines, it would most likely be soft neck garlic. Grows best in mild, mm -hmm. cold weather. Larger buffs, more cloves. Um, mild in flavor. Yep. Yep. And then we have elephant garlic. And elephant garlic is the one that we're the most familiar with because it's easiest for us to grow here in the deep south. Yeah, I grew it for the first time last yep. year, and we're going to throw up a picture there of one from my garden that Carrie's holding. Yep. Actually, it's a leek. It's not a true garlic, but it's a leek. But it's called elephant garlic. It grows the largest, it makes the biggest bub of all types of garlic. Excuse me. <laughs> Has the mildest flavor of any of them, although it wasn't real mild to me. It <laughs> stores well. Hey, we've had it for, we've kept it for six months easy. Yeah. And it does not braid. The stem on the elephant garlic is real rigid. And I'll talk about when you talk about how it's ready to harvest, it's very rigid and uh, it doesn't lend itself to braiding very well. Now let's talk about when you would plant these. Now it's a little difficult here, but we'll try to make it simple for you. In the south, on elephant garlic, we plant it just like we do our onions. We mm -hmm. plant it in the fall around the 1st of November and we overwinter it. Normally, if my memory serves me right, it's about two weeks after I harvest my big sweet onions. Somewhere there. Now, when you get ready to harvest these, what you'll notice is they're not really going to fall over. When you get ready to harvest elephant garlic, it'll have kind of like a yellowish blotch, start turning brown a little bit. Yeah, it's it, after it flowers. After it flowers, then it's going to be time for you to harvest it. It'll be brown right at the bottom of the garlic. The leaves will turn mm -hmm. brown, and some will kind of fall over. Yeah. Now, when people have been successful growing the hard neck and the soft neck garlic in the south, do that in the winter time, and excuse me, in the fall, early winter as well. Now, you guys up north, Y'all plant y'all in the springtime and you need to let it grow during the spring and summer and then harvest it. You want to plant some? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant some elephant garlic today in one of the grow bags. And this is a prime way for you guys out there to grow. Even if you don't have something prepared or you just want to experiment growing it the first year, this is a great way to grow garlic for your first time or if you're just limited to a small space. So what do we have here? What size bag? And this is our root pouch bag. Right. This is a 15 gallon and we've got 12 gallons of soil in here. Which is three bags. Let's see if I can right here. slide. Can you slide that over just a minute? Mm -hmm. So we got three bags. Slide over a little bit more. Three bags of this right here is what we put into this 15 gallon bag right here. And what's neat about this product here, it's a seed start mix, but it also works well as a pot mix because it has all these things in there and it has a balanced pH to it as well. Okay. And then we're we gonna add... This, we gotta move this back. Right here. And we'll do this right here. How about that? How much of this? A third of a cup. So we're gonna put a third of a cup and we're gonna mix it into our pot and soil pre-plant. 
Now, what I like about these bags, and I just noticed this this year, if you overwater these bags, the water kind of eases outside there and it lets air transfer from your soil to your outside a lot better than a pot does. And that's one thing I really didn't notice about these. If they get waterlogged, they drain out even through the sides there. Whoa. So that's our complete <laughs> organic fertilizer and it is kind of strong. What it is, is pelletized hen manure. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Smells worse than the garlic. Okay. All right, now what we're going to plant is elephant garlic. And here we got some elephant garlic right here. And we're gonna dump some out there. That's a pound. Minus right. one I cut out. Minus off. one. Okay, so when you get the elephant garlic, most of the time, it's gonna be in what we call cloves right here. And these have been busted apart. Now, when you grow it and you harvest it, it's gonna be in this big clove, excuse me, this big bulb. bulb. This would be a clove, I got it backwards. This big bulb right here, and this is the way you would harvest it. And then you break it apart, and that is actually a clove. A clove of what you plant. Now, the reason you don't want to buy in the grocery store and plant the ones in the grocery store is because they spray them with a product that keeps them from sprouting. The one you buy from seed stock has not been treated to keep it from, uh, from sprouting. So we got these in here. Now, normally in in row spacing, you would plant these. Uh, four to six inches apart, and that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Now about you see, two inches deep. Yeah, about two inches deep. So you see the root part there where the root was? Actually, I had a customer complain because the roots wasn't there. And I said the roots serve no purpose. If there's any root hairs there, they're simply going to die off or rot off, and it's going to sprout out in your roots. So having any roots on any of the garlic is irrelevant. So you take this clove right here, you see the pointy part right there? We're going to plant it standing up. We're going to push it in there and we're going to let just the tip right there be exposed. And about four inches apart, we're going to plant this around. Kind of go in a circle there. We've already got our fertilizer in there that's going to last for a couple of weeks. And then after that, you can come back and you can side dress or just sprinkle some more of that complete organic fertilizer back over the top of it. And then after that, you can start putting a liquid fertilizer in there. And the one we would use for this, as I'll show you in just a minute. See, that's a little crowded. Let me yeah. And probably... you don't want to water it too much. You want to water it about an inch a week and kind of let it dry out between. You don't want to keep it waterlogged. So we almost had enough room to plant an entire one pound packet into this grow bag right here. We got a few left over out there. So this is going to yield a bunch of elephant garlic. And even if you do cover those tips up right there, it's okay to yeah. sweat it. Now in the north, they recommend mulching it. Mm -hmm. For the cold weather. Now we wouldn't necessarily we don't here. have to do that here in the south. But you would need to do that up more. I had some fertilizer. The little bottle? Yeah. Under that bag? No, no anyway. Oh. Our Dr. Joe's fertilizer that you put in there, we set on little tubes there, is ideal to fertilize these right here. And what you do is take that tablet and dissolve it in a gallon of water and just do a soil drench on top of this right here about every week or two. Now you would use the exact same fertility program on these you would onions and on last week's show we did a breakdown of exactly how you would fertilize that so you can go back and pull that back up and see step-by-step -step instructions on how you would keep these fertilized there at some point probably about three weeks into it if i was doing an in-ground plant i would add sulfur to it but in a pot situation there you could simply use the nutri boost and the dr joe's and it has a little bit of sulfur in it and it would get you by as well that keep you from having to buy a big bag of ammonia sulfate for just a grow bag of elephant. Now, you know what? You could plant onions in here just like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when these start to come off and when they start to mature, what you'll find is little bitty bublets. Let's show them right there. This is some we had left over from last year. They're I'll actually at the bottom of the garlic. Yep. And you can actually eat these or you can plant them 
and grow garlic from them. It takes a couple years. It though. takes at least two years, two, three years, but you have the true mm -hmm. garlic from the mother plant. Yep. But it's just a long, long-term process there. So a lot of people always ask, what do we do to these bublets there? Well, you can eat them or you can save them for your seed stock. It's going to be a long, you better, have, better be patient if you're going to use it for your seed stock. And the other thing that Carrie did with the the scapes, it looks like a little green onion coming mm -hmm. off of the garlic. She made some um, pesto with it. Yeah. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Now, if you do cut that off, you're going to sacrifice that pretty flower mm -hmm. that blooms. Scapes. What about scapes? This one is about Yeah, the scapes, the regular garlic and the elephant garlic produces a little bit of scape. Uh, a uh, regular, I don't think, I misspoke, I don't think elephant garlic does, but the regular garlic produces that scape and you can eat it. Now, I, a few years ago, did a hardcore experiment with uh, hard neck and soft neck uh, garlic. I labeled them. I planted them in my garden. I did it step by step, and I didn't have good results out there. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am no hard neck or soft neck gardening expert by no means. Now, we do a heck of a job growing elephant garlic in here. But if you got some tips on varieties or how to plant those in the deep, deep south, Leave that in comments below. We'd be interested to hear about what your experiences are. I know there's some varieties used out in Louisiana. They call Cajun varieties. They've had decent luck growing in the deep south. Some people will actually put them in the refrigerator for eight to ten weeks and let the refrigerator trick them and stay in, thinking that they're in there for uh, winter time and then plant them in December and have had luck with that. We've not tried that. That's definitely something. Talk about the storage once you harvest it. Yeah, now we like to store them just like we would uh, onions or potatoes. You want to put them in a, I like to pull them up and leave them outside in the sun for about a day and let them dry a little bit, especially if it's wet, it dries that soil so you can shake it off. And we put it in a cool, dark, ventilated spot in the barn, out of direct sun, and it'll last for a long time. And then when you get ready for your Italian dish, just march right over to the barn and get you some garlic. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yep. So there you have it, folks. Right. Maybe we have helped you with planting your garden, planting on planting garlic, trying something a little bit different. If you live in the deep south, you got to try this elephant garlic if you can get some. It's a little scary this year. We've already sold out. So next year, you want to place your order way ahead of time to make sure you have some. Our company, with a lot of other companies, do pre sales on garlic, and that's the way you need to buy it because it sells out quick. Otherwise, you may want to try your look at some, some other type of garlic. Did you show them the white, um, what's that kind we had? Did you have one of them? This one? Yeah. Yeah, I showed them that one. Uh, right. Which one? The... Oh, this one. Yeah, I did. So this is the hard neck garlic right here. And it's in that that big clove right there. And you would, to plant this, you would do it the same way. The German white. Yeah, this is the German white hard. That. You would break it apart just like you would the elephant garlic and plant it the exact same way. Now these are a little bit smaller. Well there you have it, folks. Maybe we've helped you and inspired you to try your hand at garlic. And the corny joke of the week would be... Did you hear about the dog who ate a bunch of garlic? Hmm? His bark was worse than his bite. <laughs> So thanks for watching. Now get out there and get dirty.